Hey, Jules Plus Vegan, and as always, welcome to my channel. And for those of you who are new, I know you can benefit. So this is day 43 of our 45-day countdown for random acts of kindness in preparation for Easter. And you know, a lot of people think that Lent, which is the 40 days before Easter, but it worked out to be 45, um, is a dark, solemn time, you know, in preparing for Jesus to go through his passion, which is his death and resurrection. But I think it's a glorious time. And I think it's a time for miracles. It's a time for total reflection, of course, tremendous prayer, and to just know that all things are possible. That's true every day. But I think while we're thinking of Jesus in the desert for 40 days, um, and the devil playing all his games of temptation, <laughs> <laughs> as if he could take Jesus down when Jesus is literally God in human form. But, you know, Jesus was human as well. And so his defenses were probably getting pretty low. He's in the desert. It's 40 days without food. He's fasting. Um, the devil is totally saying, hey, I could turn that rock into a loaf of bread, my friend. Sourdough, pumpernickel, whatever you want. <laughs> and then daring to say that I could give you all of this kingdom. It could all be yours. You know, all these temptations. And then Jesus just looking at him going, dude, you do understand I'm God. <laughs> <laughs> and that you can't give me anything unless the Father says so. Such an interesting uh, paradox. But anyway, so I think it's a beautiful time. And I need it to be a beautiful time because my precious nephew, Dean, unfortunately had OD'd on a bunch of ridiculous drugs that he didn't even know because so many drugs are laced these days. Let's just say they're not our parents' drugs. <laughs> If your parents are from the 60s, they're not your parents' drugs, okay? Uh, but anyway, um, it was horrific. He was in a coma. Right now, I think he's beautiful. Uh, his eyes are open. He seems to be smiling at times, but it could just be a misshapen mustache that they trimmed. I don't know. Um, I think he's looking around. His family isn't so sure. Um, but anyway, he needs continued prayer. But I think that in the resurrection... Uh, Dean could very well be resurrected and be sitting up, if not standing in this time. So I'm all for prayer and I'm game for all of this. But for those who only checked in for that random acts of kindness, I'm not going to make you push the like button <laughs> before you go. But I will tell you what the random act is. So day one was telling someone we adored them. Day two, which was today, was to try and view the beauty and pageantry of either the sunrise or the sunset, of which both I was completely unsuccessful. <laughs> I was not outside during the sunrise, and the sunset was not available. It was pure cloud cover, but I always see the glory, even though I'm in the desert. I can see the glory. I can, I can see the budding of the tiny little leaves on the new plants that are ready to show up. I can see little animals scurrying around in that brown desert that other people don't necessarily notice. I can already see God's glory. Um, but I hope you took a, took a moment, and I would love to hear about it in the comments below. Did you choose sunrise or sunset? All right, so this is for day three, which is actually tomorrow. I try and stay ahead. And again, I'm trying to choose things that are lovely, they're a blessing to ourselves, and of course to the recipient, and they generally don't cost any money. So for day three, which again is tomorrow, the goal is to help clean up a mess, to just help clean up a mess. That is such a blessing. When I was a little girl, my mother, we had 11 children, we always had vans and station wagons, and we'd pile all the kids in. And if my mother saw a mess on the side of the road, she would literally pull over and say, kids, get out and clean that up. And we were like, what, mom? No, that, that's not even our mess. We didn't even do that. We just cleaned our bedroom. And she'd say, you know what? It's for the planet. We don't know who did it, but you need to get out and clean that up. Well, what's really funny is that every school site, people always say, Miss McCants, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm picking up the trash off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to pick that up. We have custodians and there's kids. And I just know it's from my mother. And I just smile and think, you know, it's for Mother Earth from my mother. And I continue to do that today. So it's just helping with the mess. You know, instead of yelling at your kid for not cleaning up, 
just this once. Why don't you just do it as a gift? Um, if you see someone knock something down in the store, it's hilarious. It drives my husband crazy. But when I'm walking down an aisle and stuff is on the floor, I refold it. I pick it up. Like, I just do it automatically. <laughs> I'm like, I can't help it. I just want to make the store look better. Um, so is there someone or something in some place that you can ease their burden by simply cleaning up that mess? That'll be a blessing. It'll be a great surprise to them. And it'll probably bring joy to your heart too. So that's a random acts of kindness uh, for tomorrow. All right. But I said that I was going to talk about fasting and in particular, this one from Pope Francis, and it says, do you want to fast this Lent? And I will include it in the description of this video. Do you want to fast this Lent in the words of Pope Francis? So number one, he's not talking about food. And I've been reading several articles about Lent and fasting and, and how a lot of eating disorders come up at this time because people uh, decide to turn it into a diet. And I've been really careful about that because I've been fasting on Tuesdays and Fridays, and I've mentioned this already, which are the sorrowful mysteries and everything to do with Jesus' passion. So it's literally Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and being condemned to death. It's Pontius Pilate having Jesus scourged with those horrific scorpion uh, whips. Oh my gosh. It's um, the crowning of thorns where they play a crown of thorns and place it on his head and mock him with a scarlet cloak and and putting a reed into his right hand. It's him carrying the cross to the skull place, which is known as Golgotha, after being beaten, having that wooden beam on his back, after the crown of thorns being jammed into his head, and the pain of that, and still carrying and bearing that cross all the way to Golgotha, and then finally, the actual crucifixion, and what they refer to as him expiring. I guess we all have an expiration date, but it's a freaky concept. <laughs> so anyway, on Tuesdays and Fridays of the Rosary, I go ahead and fast until five o'clock. And then I have a very gentle salad. And I try not to provoke my taste buds in any way, but just humbly eat to live on those days rather than living to eat. And so I've been looking up fasting. Well, it says a lot of people decide to turn Lent into a diet because they'll say, what are you going to give up? And they're like, oh man, I'm going to give up chocolate because by the time I get to Easter, not only can they binge their full heads off is what they're thinking, but uh, they'll probably lose some weight. Now, I'm going to give up soda because I mean like diet mentality. So I have to be really careful on those fasting days that I'm not accidentally thinking of it as an extra long intermittent fasting or something, but I'm literally saying that I'm prayerful all day and every time I'm hungry, I'm offering it up. So I'm trying to find a balance. Well, I love this because Pope Francis recognizes, as do I, that when people give things up for Lent, so often they're cranky, they're bitter, they're angry, and even biblically, it says if you're choosing to fast, do not fast and let people know. Wash your face, dress properly. Don't talk about how hungry you are. Don't talk about how brave you are because you gave up chewing gum, which would be huge for me because I'm a gum addict. Um, but whatever it is, you're not even supposed to brag about it because God knows in the recesses of your heart what you're doing. And so I try and be really careful on Tuesdays and Fridays to not even mention that I'm fasting, that just say that I'm busy at lunchtime. I don't even tell my husband uh, that I didn't have breakfast. He sees me with my lemon water and I get busy at lunch. So teachers aren't concerned for me. And finally, I have a lovely, humble dinner and that's working for me. So the Pope said, how about if you fast this Lent from behaviors instead? So number one, he says, fast from hurting words and say kind words instead. Fast from sadness and be filled with gratitude. Fast from anger and be filled with patience. Fast from pessimism, which is such a big one today, and be filled with hope. Yes, please. Fast from worries and have trust in God. Fast from complaints and contemplate simplicity. Man, if you have simplicity, instead, you're already content. Fast from pressures and be prayerful. Fast from bitterness and fill your hearts with joy. Fast from selfishness and be compassionate to others. 
fast from grudges and be reconciled. So important. My gosh, people who are holding on to things. Why? Why? And fast from words and be silent so that you can listen. You know, it was so interesting this morning. I woke up a little later. I was super tired. I had to hurry up and take care of the animals. And just as I was caring for the animals, I realized that the um, dog's food was empty and that I was going to have to fill it back up. And then I realized I left like the pig bowl outside and they had to go get the pig bowl. Some mornings when I'm in a hurry, those are insanity for me. I am like smacking against the sliding glass door. I'm fretting at the dogs. I'm sh you know what? I was so tired this morning that I just casually flowed with all of it. And I noticed about halfway that I wasn't anxious or anything. I noticed I wasn't fretting or freaking or nothing. And I just kind of giggled <laughs> because I thought, wow, I am actually too tired to be anxious right now. And yet I can freak out, but it's going to still take the same two minutes and 42 seconds. So it was all about mindset. Yes, I'm pausing you because I'm sneezing. <laughs> if this is choppy, it's because I'm trying not to mention that I am having allergies. What else is new when I sit here doing my video? But you guys are so worth it that I'm just casually pausing and pretending that I'm not freaking right here. All right, but yeah, I suddenly realized it was mindset. So when I look at this and I'm like, okay, you could fast from anger. Like some people... And they respond the same way in every circumstance. They just immediately start yelling and don't even realize why. Like they haven't even thought about it. I always pray for that three second grace. I don't get it every time. <laughs> but the three second grace before I respond. So I can make my choice in responding to something. Leaving out complaints. Ugh, isn't that so beautiful? Not being selfish and actually being compassionate towards others. It's brilliant, and most certainly on those grudges, to just reconcile them. You know, if God forgives us all the time, can we not forgive one another? All right, my friends, like if you like, join us if you haven't, subscribe. Let me know which one you like the most. I'm actually going to use that instead for the icon of the video. I was going to use something else, but I don't really know how else to attach it. We'll see. I'll see how it goes. It's either in the description or it's the icon. And until we talk again... Best of all, know that you're blessed.